Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. Um, okay, I'm going to pick up the first three cases. We have some really good cases. This is an interesting week, and I really look forward to the back and forth on some of these. The first one, which is just interesting because we have seen this a number of times where EMTs are stealing. So now the FDNY gets hint that an EMT is stealing from patients and arranges a sting to set them up. So they the FDNY stages a person as a um, patient. They intentionally get the suspect dispatched to the call. They have marked bills of about $1,100 in the wallet. And when the uh, they transport the patient, not knowing it's not real, right? They transport the patient and the patient slash undercover investigator uh, determines that about $600 or more is missing. And this person is now um, charged with a felony, grand larceny in the fourth degree, uh, two misdemeanors, petty larceny, official misconduct. And I'm suspecting there will be more because remember that's for this, right? So there could be the prior ones, which now they may be able to say, well, now we are convinced he was the one who was stealing. Um, so, you know, simple lesson, don't steal. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, but I, I think from a from a leadership perspective, um, I've had to deal with this. I know some of my clients have had to deal with this. And as I travel around, many fire departments have had to deal with this. And the way it happens is. Um, you're going along, you've had EMS, you never had a problem. And all of a sudden you get a, you get a, a report that money's missing. You say, well, you know, maybe they are absent-minded and, you know, in all the uh, stress from the medical emergency that they have, and maybe they misplace it. Or you, we write it off. Okay. Right. Well, no, it happens. I mean, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, it is. maybe you talk to the people, but whatever, then another one, then another one, then another one. And I know uh, the ones I've been involved in, it ends up in a spreadsheet and you start looking at, okay, where's the common denominator? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And pretty soon, and I don't know, I can't say it's after five, after 10, after 15, but at some point, the spreadsheet comes out, you look at who's, and then, and now you're confronted with something. Yeah. Do you, and, and I think one of the mistakes that many fire departments make is they, they call the accused in yeah. And they try to interrogate them. And somebody's going to be doing something like this is not just going to roll over. Um, right. I, you know, uh, the, we had, the one that I was involved in, this is, you know, this kid comes from a, a hard criminal family. I mean, most of his relatives were at our ACI. And, um, you know, so, um, you, you know, he's not going to roll over. And, uh, and you've got to also assume that when you catch him, if you try to do it on your own, if the fire department tries to set up its own sting, um, that he's going to pull out every uh, excuse in the book. Oh, I was I was taking it for safekeeping. I was afraid that uh, he may lose it, given his mental status. They're, they're going to come up with all the excuses. So leave it to the professionals. <laughs> OK, you leave it to the pros, the police. In this case, it was the Department of Investigations, the New York City uh, Department of Investigations, which probably uh, handles more criminal cases than most police departments <laughs> in the course of a day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were set up for it. They knew what they were doing. They had a they had a plan. They executed it. And, uh, you know. Yeah, um, that's what it is. So but yeah. it, you're right. It happens all the time, usually elderly people. Um, and we we tend to write them off. Um, yeah. Yet, knowing that, people who are will prey on them, right? People mm -hmm. prey on the victims who we're not going to believe anyway because, oh, but I, I think you're right. And I think if you are an agency and you receive more than one, I think two is enough. You better mm -hmm. start looking well, you, you out. you got to investigate any. You have to investigate any. But of it's course, hard. Of course. It's hard. Like you call the people in and they go, we don't know. I mean, we didn't do anything. You know, that's, you right. know, they're not going to just roll over on it. But right. um, after you get the second one and the third one, and then you got to start looking at the common denominators. And just by looking at it, you may get it to stop. You may, I'm, I'm not, right. you know, not, not an absolute, but by looking at, it. but if you just do, well, you know, maybe it was this and maybe it was that. And um, sometimes we, uh, we tend not to look hard at people who are high performers 
um, who, uh, when you need somebody, it's two o'clock in the morning, somebody just went out on an injury or sick. Um, right. You know, they're, they're the our ones favorite person. We trust and, them. You know, and and that's some of the uh, that's some of the challenges. But uh, we got to be prepared for it. And in the cases I've been involved with, one hundred percent, it's been drugs. One hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's it's another reason why we've got to really be watching things because if they're stealing money, then they may be stealing other things as well, oh, particularly yeah. to support their habit. So get them before it gets to a point where it's criminal. Get them the help they need. Maybe we can get them turned around as a good employee. Maybe not, but 